Hi, this is Cycle 2, Week 16, Science. This is Experiment 189 in Van Cleve's book, Shape Up. This is a really cool demonstration of, of some neat scientific uh, principles, and uh, I know you're going to love it, and I know that your students uh, are going to love it. Um, as, we, as we start off this week, we, we need to, to go over some of the grammar, some of the, the vocabulary. The, the critical piece of the vocabulary and grammar for this week is the center of mass. To uh, explain the center of mass, I want you to imagine any object, any physical object in our universe. Every object has mass and, um, and, and we can see it. So if we think about a marble, it's a roughly spherical shaped object. And as we look at this object, we can all imagine physically where the center of that marble is. Because this marble is so regularly shaped, and because the mass of the molecule is so evenly distributed, the center of mass of the marble lines up, basically it's superimposed with the physical center of the marble. To help illustrate that more, think about a bookend. Now this object is irregularly shaped, right? It is irregularly shaped, so, so let's ask the same two questions. Where's the center of this object? The center of the object is, you know, we, we can sort of measure the distance here and sort of the, 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 it's a little higher here, right? The, so the distance here, and we can find that point where they cross, but we all can sort of intuitively understand that it's here, right? Somewhere in the middle, right here, right here, where the, the center of that object is. But where's the center of mass of this object? Well, now it's not superimposed because it's a bookend, right? And so the base of this object is weighted weight has been added, mass has been added to this object to make it easier for it to sit and hold up the books, which means that the center of mass of this object is no longer superimposed with its geometric center, but rather it would be, it would be pulled down slightly by this additional mass that's in the bookend itself. So this object, the center of mass and the, and the geometric center don't necessarily coincide at all, they do not, but for objects that are roughly spherical, or objects that are highly regularly shaped, like squares, uh, the center of mass is often uh, lines up with the geometric center. So in our, our demonstration today, we're gonna look at spherical objects, then, right? Roughly spherical objects. So this is a piece, this is a roll of, of scotch tape, partially used, this is a marble. And then we also have um, two jar lids. Jar lids that, uh, that have been attached together by the director uh, for our campus, okay? And, and so uh, these three objects then are all roughly spherical. And so the geometric center of the objects, uh, it's relatively easy for us to imagine, right? It's, I mean, it's approximately right here. It's in the center. Uh, and in this case, the center of mass, again, it, it lines up, it superimposes with the geometric center. But what we notice, let's, let's do it in this case here, the the most of the mass of the two lids is relatively far away from the center of mass compared to the mass of the marble. Most of the mass of the marble is very close to the center of mass. And what that means in practice is when I set up an inclined plane and I let my objects roll down the plane, then um, the objects will move at different speeds. And the object that will have the, the greater speed will be the object whose center of mass is closest, who, the, whose center of mass is closest to the edge uh, of, the, of the object. Or in other words, the, the, the mass that's distributed around the center of mass is very close to the center of mass, which means it takes less energy to make the object move and roll than it does to take an object whose, whose mass is relatively far away from the center of mass. And that's what we're gonna illustrate. Um, a couple of things about this experiment. This is definitely one that I would suggest you um, practice at home. It takes maybe a little bit of finesse. There's a couple of, of things that can easily go wrong. Um, but remember, uh, when you're demonstrating with your students, if something does go wrong, if it doesn't go exactly the way you want, that's okay. You'll understand the basic principles of what's happening and you can explain it uh, to your kids and you can help them to see. And just to remind them that science in the real world is often messy and that's okay. What we're doing is we're getting our hands into God's creation so that we can understand it that we can understand um, what's working. So what I've set up here <clears throat> is an inclined plane. In uh, Van Cleve's book, they recommend um, taking a table uh, and setting it up. That would certainly work. I think the more rectangular the shape of your inclined plane, the better. 
that you, the, the farther the objects can roll down your inclined plane, the, the, the more separation will occur between the objects that are moving faster than those um, that are moving slower. So if you were thinking about using, like if your kids have a table, for example, a play table and the legs easily come off, that would potentially work. Most of those that I've seen are pretty square shaped. And so I, I wouldn't lean that way, but, but try it if you would like. I'm using my lovely assistant's tutor board. Uh, I thought that was sort of an obvious, uh, easy choice. Uh, if your campus is using tutor boards, then it's already in the room with you. And so it would be easy to, to set it up. Um, if your campus is not using tutor boards, then that, that's okay. Maybe some of the directors have um, tutor boards, or maybe some of the, uh, the other members of the community might have tutor boards that you could use. Or if not, um, any structure that, that you can prop up and make an inclined plane with works, but I recommend a rectangular shape. Something else I want to uh, comment on, in, in Van Cleve's book, uh, they recommend using masking tape and the jar lids and the marble. And I think that that will work um, very well. I, I'm sure that it does, but I had a hard time with, with that working because there, there's a couple of principles here. So the first principle to determining how fast the objects move down the inclined plane is uh, how close the mass of the object is to the center of mass. Again, the closer it is, the less energy it takes to get it moving. But remember, it's an inclined plane. And so uh, objects, the other thing that, that's working here then is the, the, um, the idea of potential energy. And so objects that are much more massive have much higher potential energy. And so even though it takes more energy to get that model, that this structure rolling, it has more potential energy to begin with. So an important point, I think, is that you, you would like your objects that you're gonna roll down the plane to have approximately the same mass, or at least close. Um, and so, again, I had a hard time using masking tape, you know, taking pieces, um, amounts of the tape off to try to get the masses to be the same so that it would illustrate the principle. Um, so instead, I went with a little bit of scotch tape, a partially used roll. This, and I think that this will work very well. Um, all right, so let, let's look at the actual demonstration now. Oh, which brings me to one more point. So um, in, in the, the book, they, they recommend having all three objects rolling at the same time, and I like that idea. But I can't um, do that very well here because I just have two hands. So I'm gonna use them in pairs. Uh, but for your demonstration in class, um, I would definitely try to get all three going. Let, maybe let a student helper do it. Maybe let student helpers do all three objects. Um, if, if you have the little kids, if you have the ABC variants, maybe, maybe a parent helper or an adult helper would be good to illustrate at one time and then let the kids try it. But this is something that everybody um, can, can do. Okay, so let's, let's set up our two objects. So we're going to start with the marble and the scotch tape. Again, the, the uh, principle that we're, we're demonstrating is, the question we're asking is, which object rolls faster and why? And the principle that we're demonstrating is the objects whose mass is closest to the center of mass take less um, energy to get moving, and, and they'll, they'll roll down the inclined plane faster. Okay, so I'm going to hold them with one finger each like this, and then I'm going to count. I'm going to say three, two, one. Boom. The marble uh, moved down the inclined plane quickly, and more quickly than the scotch tape, just as we had, um, as we had predicted. All right, so let's do it again. So now we're going to take our um, jar lids and our scotch tape. Same thing. Three, two, one. Boom. Scotch tape uh, travels faster than the inclined plane, although it was closer, right, as you see. So other things that might go wrong. It's important uh, to illustrate this principle that the objects travel in uh, straight lines so that they travel the same distance. Because again, the, the, the time at which they, they cross the finish line will depend a little bit if, if one object has a much longer um, distance that it travels. So uh, again, so in order to do that, then I, I, I very carefully tried to balance my inclined plane. So I have it propped up here, and then I have a couple of books underneath it. I'm doing a couple of things again. I'm, I'm trying to prevent the inclined plane from sagging because I am using the tutor board. I want it to be as straight of an inclined plane as possible. And I'm also trying to make sure it's not wobbling this way so that I'm, I'm enabling the path of the objects to be pretty straight um, as it travels down uh, the inclined plane. This is a really neat demonstration. It's one everyone can do, uh, and it's one that illustrates the principles well. Uh, this is Cycle 2, Week 16 Science.